What's up, Terrans? Trace here, and I've been thinking about aliens. Not like little green aliens or, you know, little Scandinavian named gray aliens, like in my favorite show, Stargate SG-1, shout out, but rather the prospect of us answering the question, are we alone with actual scientific certainty? Here is Seth Shostak, chief astronomer at the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence in his TED Talk way, way back in 2012. Because of the vast amount of habitable real estate in the cosmos, I figure we're going to pick up a signal within two dozen years. And I feel strongly enough about that to make a bet with you. Either we're going to find E.T. in the next two dozen years, or I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Dude, I totally agree. Aliens are out there definitely. The question is, how do we find them? Do we look at interstellar objects flying through our solar system? Do we watch for radio signals up in the sky? Maybe they're already here and we have video of them that the military has been suppressing our whole lives. One of these things is not like the other. So, I have questions. Welcome to Uno Dose of Trace, everyone, where every day is a school day, and I love it. Subscribe, join, learn something new every week. You will not regret it. So let's kick into this. Aliens are so hot right now. If you look, you're going to see three really big stories out in the news. Oumuamua fast radio bursts, and of course, the US military. So let me break each one down. Oumuamua was an interstellar object that flew through our solar system and made a hard right and accelerated away from us. Like, it saw us and started running. <laughs> but one hypothesis was that it shouldn't accelerate away from the sun, unless it wasn't an asteroid or a comet, it was a spacecraft and aliens were in there and they were running away really fast maybe with a solar sail or some kind of other propulsion system that we don't understand. In fact, the most likely explanation was solved by the Pioneer anomaly. Pioneers 10 and 11 were launched to Jupiter and Saturn in the 1970s to help us learn more about the solar system before we launched the Voyager. But for some unexplained NASA files reason, the Pioneers were flying out there and they were slowing down. Like something was dragging on them and nobody knew why. Because that shouldn't happen unless Einstein was wrong, and space wasn't what we thought it was, and there are things that we don't understand out there, and oh my gosh, what do we do? This mystery stood for a long time, until in 2011, when scientists took all of this decades of punch card and analog data, and they converted it to something that modern computers could crunch. Their calculations found that the pioneers were emitting more heat out of one side of the spacecraft than the other, and that could cause the slowing. It would slow them down just a little bit, but over time, it would be significant. In space, heating does matter because it gives off energy. What if Oumuamua was being unevenly heated by the sun due to its weird tumble? That could cause speed increases. So could any outgassing or gas escaping the surface because of solar heating. The thing is, you might think you know what Oumuamua looks like, but that's an artist rendering. The actual picture looks more like this. So based on this evidence that it was accelerating, Oumuamua was reclassified from a rockier asteroid to an icier comet. And that could have outgassing and it could have uneven heating that would allow it to accelerate. Ideally, we would be continuing to study this thing, but we don't have that much more information because it came and left our solar system so unexpectedly. So it's not aliens, but it is intriguing. Another place where we think we may have found aliens was fast radio bursts. They're bursts of radio waves coming from deep space. These little bursts of radio energy last for milliseconds, and they're so intense that they outshine radio-producing neutron stars called pulsars. Electromagnetic communications can mean technology and can mean intelligence intelligence were like, hello, but they come from all over the sky. So while at first some thought that they might be originating from alien life, now the most popular hypothesis is that they come from explosions in areas of space where dense clouds of particles and magnetic fields are common. So unfortunately for us all, it's not aliens, it was just exotic star stuff that took some time to explain. Like me. <laughs> and of course, the third big story is the US military releasing those UFO videos that we all knew that they had and they were hiding it from as the whole conspiracy theory shtick, you get it. These are super exciting to see, especially after decades of knowing that the military had stuff like this, but the story doesn't hold extraordinary proof. If you're not familiar, in 2007, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program was started. It no longer exists, by the way. And it was started because allegedly a giant flying Tic Tac was allegedly spotted off the coast of San Diego with instruments you know, radar and such. 
This was around the time we started upgrading 1980s aircraft radar into modern systems. In 2014-15, when these new videos were captured, the USS Theodore Roosevelt was getting its new radar, and that's when these new pilots started to see things on their instruments. As more radar was updated on more of the jets, more of the pilots were spotting these crafts on their modern radar systems. And now one could say that the new radar could detect the aliens and the old radar couldn't. But the big problem with people saying that they've seen a thing is the people saying it. Not because they are individually not trustworthy, but because humanity as a group doesn't have the best track record in here. Human testimony and memory isn't the best. We don't like it in the court system. We don't like it in science. We don't actually like it for much of anything except for our own experience. Unfortunately for the truth is out there crowd, memory, not a great measure of truth. Hard data on the other hand, awesome. And unfortunately, we don't actually have any hard data. We have some really compelling video. And even in this case, one of the pilots flew to within a thousand feet of one of the radar blips that allegedly was an alien and saw nothing. Of course, the explanation was the aliens were invisible. However, why would the aliens be invisible during the day when at night all of these alien sightings throughout the last 70 years have bright lights in the sky? Why would you be invisible and also have bright lights? A common debunking of alien technology is that the technology seems to keep pace with human technology. It's always just out of reach, which is just another reason why we shouldn't necessarily believe humans seeing things and instead should look for hard data because most scientists agree that we're probably not alone in the universe. But proving that we have company is a huge challenge. The average person or excitable media figure might jump and conclude aliens, but a thoughtful scholar would want to exhaust literally every other possibility before getting to aliens. Like homeboy Carl Sagan said, quote, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The most extraordinary evidence, the best chance for finding aliens is not via human eyeballs, unless maybe they stood on the White House lawn and shook the hand of the president or something. Although with the state of the internet today, who would even believe that? Instead, we need peer reviewed radio and electromagnetic signals directly attributable to a specific planet or area in the sky. We could also get proven artifacts left over from ancient civilizations and for the latter, Think Tabby Star. It's a star that has this weird light pattern that we haven't yet explained. And some think that maybe if we can't explain it in any other way, it's a Dyson Sphere. Right now they're modeling all sorts of different asteroid and dust patterns, all sorts of different lensing, and they're trying to figure out a different way to explain it. If all of those ways fail, maybe it's aliens. Of course, an even better artifact would be like if we go to Mars and we find something that nature couldn't have made, right? But until we do that, Aliens are out there? The main way we're gonna know we're not alone is electromagnetic transmission, which is done mainly by the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So I called Dr. Seth Shostak at SETI to talk about it. Check, 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 check. Oh, hello, common Earth. I'm Seth Shostak. I'm senior astronomer here at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California. And uh, the intention of the researchers who work here, and there are about a hundred of them, is to try and find some evidence that there's life in space or has been life in space. Well, how would we know if we if we detected an alien presence out there? Now, it's pretty tough to detect the aliens directly. I mean, unless they're really big and really close. If they were about the size of the moon and, you know, they were within a million miles, you'd see them in the night sky or maybe the daytime sky. But we're looking for signals. It turns out that radio signals, you know, there, there's really no limit to how far they go. They just go out into space. Even with the kind of technology we have today, you could pick up radio signals halfway across the universe if uh, they were strong enough. So... That was worked out a long time ago, 60 years ago, that it might be possible for societies to communicate with one another via radio and more recently using lasers and stuff like that. So there are lots of ways you could detect those intelligent aliens, the kind you really want to meet. Let's say kind of hypothetically that we get a signal that we're like, ooh, this could be something important. What what kind of happens next? What's the, what's the procedure? Yeah, a lot of people think that if we picked up a signal, it would be kept secret from them. 
because people just love the idea of secrecy, particularly when it comes to aliens. I, I think we know what would be next if we were to pick up a signal. You know, everybody in the world who has a telescope, and probably a lot of people who don't have telescopes, would be looking up in the sky at that direction. And, you know, the astronomers would be trying to figure out, okay, how far away is this? And are there any planets in that direction? And, of course, the SETI scientists would suddenly have money. Money is the big problem for SETI. And uh, they would build a much bigger instrument that might allow you to get the message. I mean, even if it's not intended for us, maybe it's only a navigation beacon. Who knows what it is? But, you know, there's some information on this signal. Maybe they've made it easy for you to figure out. And then suddenly you're going to get information from a very advanced society. If people around the world with the right kind of equipment can pick up the signal, then you've got a big story. So that's what would happen immediately. It would be a big news story. After that, well, who knows? I mean, people would, you know, build specialized equipment, try and see if they could understand anything, that sort of thing. And the possibilities then at that point become long term and semi endless, I would say. What I keep coming back to is let's say we found a cool signal. We are pretty sure it's aliens and or some kind of intelligent life of some kind that's transmitting something. The state of the internet today, I feel like they would just dismiss that, say that's all fake. That's all That's all a fake thing. How do we know beyond a shadow of a doubt? Yeah, right. How do you avoid fake news in this biz? And the answer is, you don't believe any single detection, of course. I mean, that's true in science in general. If you might not believe it until several people reported it. And then you say, okay, these people don't seem to be in cahoots with one another. And we would ask people, you know, people in in different countries with different kinds of equipment. Can you pick it up? Now, how would we know that it's really ET? A signal coming from somebody's planet around another star is gonna move slowly across the sky at the speed at which the stars do. But at any time you look up there, you know, they've gotta be in that direction, and then an hour later, they're in that direction, and an hour later, they're in that direction. And that kind of test will tell you very quickly, this signal is moving with the stars across the sky. Yeah. And it's coming from that spot or that region or whatever. From, and it's coming from that spot. In the end, radio is the answer. It's pretty amazing. I mean, we got already Planet Money and 99PI and Backstory and More Perfect. How much better can it get? But it's a technology that allows us to send a message through space and thus through time into the future. There are a lot of reasons why we may not have seen aliens yet. But like Dr. Shostak says, we should find them very soon. And uh, while my colleagues just say, well, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, I've tried to do better than that by looking at the speed of the search. And, you know, you can predict how fast computers are going to become for the maybe next 10 or 20 years. You know, if you just do that, then it looks like that within 20 years, we'll have look for signals coming from a million different star systems, maybe two million. I have the feeling that if you look at one or two million star systems, you might pick up something interesting. You might finally trip across that signal. So that's why I usually say, well, I don't know, but my guess is that within 20 years or something like that, we'll hear from the aliens. Be prepared. In 1991, we knew of only nine planets, nine in the whole universe. I mean, Pluto was still a planet then. And that was the same year that Disney's Beauty and the Beast was released in theaters. The animated one, not the live action one. Be out. And that's not that long ago. Today, thanks to the work of many, many hundreds of astronomers and experts around the world, we know of around 4,000 exoplanets, and of those, we think about 49 are Earth signs inhabitable for Terrans, which is humongous. So as the amount of data that we collect about the galaxy grows, and the amount of computing power we have to churn through that data and to isolate signals from the noise gets stronger and better, eventually, we'll find aliens. Simple as that. We're looking for a needle in a haystack. But that haystack isn't getting any smaller, and we are getting exponentially better at looking. Uno Dose of Trace is sponsored in part by Brilliant. Curiosity is like at the core of my being. I am curious about everything, and I never really understand something until I get the why. Passively watching just doesn't get me there, but Brilliant does. Brilliant is like the best teacher you've ever had combined with a good storyteller. I wanted to know more about interference in radio telescopes, so I took their course on it and I was so impressed. I found myself saying, huh, a lot, which is a good thing, by the way. And as you learn on Brilliant, there are little quizzes to make sure you understand what's happening. And they're not intimidating at all, and instead, you get to check yourself and make sure that you understand as you learn and grow. The little quiz questions made me feel like I actually get it, and I'm on the right track, which is great. Try it out and let me know if you agree. Click over to brilliant.org trace or grab the link in the description. You can sign up for free and satisfy your curiosity while building up to even more curiosity. And as a bonus for Uno Dose of Trace viewers, the first 200 people will also get 20% off if you choose to try an annual membership. And I think you should. It supports a great product and it helps support Unidos of Trace.
So thanks. Thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. I know I enjoyed writing and researching it. I learned a lot. I hope you did too. Thank you for watching and subscribing and just giving your time to Uno Dose of Trace. Right here we have all my patrons. Thank you for being a patron, everyone. I could not do this without you. If you want to join, there's a link in the description. So thanks again. I am Trace, and I'll see you in the future.